So this is a proud moment for us. Uh, yeah, we're uh, proud of Stacy for making this decision. And as parents, all we can do is point our children towards Jesus, and uh, they have to uh, heed the call. And um, yeah, for me, um, I was thankful for my parents to point me to Jesus too. And but I didn't answer the call till I was 26. So I'm glad that Stacy's doing it this early. And that's my regret if I that I didn't do it that early. Because um, following the Lord, you'll never regret it. So, but Stacy has a little testimony here that she'd like to tell you. Hi, my name is Stacy. I believe God spoke to me that I am ready to be baptized. I want to follow Jesus' example. He was baptized to show us how important it was. When I was little, my faith in God was not strong. It was not until I came here to Canada that I began to know Jesus deeper. Many people helped me grow in Jesus. My dad and mom with their nightly devotions and prayer, Aunt Mary Grace, who is my closest friend and mentor, and Uncle Dick and Aunt Liz, who showed me how to love others. My brother Brandon gave me a little Bible. It was called the Action Bible. I love that book so much. When I was reading, I came up to the story of Esther. I learned that Esther risked her life to save her own people. Her cousin Mordecai said to her, Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. Until now, Esther is my favorite character in the Bible. She helped me to always trust in God. She also helped me to be a braver person. I believe baptism shows you are leaving your old life behind forever when you come out of the water just like Jesus started his ministry after he was baptized and tempted. Back when I was four or five, I was diagnosed with a sickness called dengue fever. I was in the hospital for three weeks and almost died, but God saved me through the prayers of my Filipino family, especially Auntie Mary Jen, Pastor Spencer, and Tita Melanie. There's a funny coincidence with my name, Stacy. It means resurrection. God has given me a second chance. I love it. Hop, well, you can, yeah, you can stand in there, Stacy. She said when she was little, and I'm like, she's still, she's still not big enough even for the tank. So, Stacy, do, uh, do you know that you were a sinner and needed a Savior? Yeah. And you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he did die on a cross to forgive you for your sins? And you're going to serve him for the rest of your life no matter what happens? Yeah. Then based on your confession of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to baptize you in his name. Kingsway. For those who don't know me, my name is Lydia, and I am up here today taking my next big step in my walk with Jesus by being obedient to him and getting baptized. First, let me share with you a bit of my story. I grew up in a Christian home going to church every week. I always believed God was real, but I never had a personal relationship with him or ever tried to further my faith in him any more than what I learned once a week at church. You could tell I wasn't deep into my faith, because if you took a look at me then, you'd find there wasn't much differentiating myself from my worldly friends. I behaved, acted, and talked in the ways they did, and it sure left me empty. I knew I had an emptiness in my heart, but I was a master at distracting myself from it by filling myself with things of this world. Distraction upon distraction, all to hide away what I felt inside, to hide my brokenness. And this worked for me for so long until it didn't. When COVID lockdown came, the emptiness felt more real than ever before. I knew my lifestyle wasn't working for me anymore and that I needed to change. I was weak, broken, and tired of living for myself in this world. I hungered for something more, and I stopped hiding from that hunger. I knew all along Jesus was the answer to my brokenness. I had always known of what he'd done and the sacrifice he'd made on the cross, but I'd finally started to understand for myself what that meant. Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 6 says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. 
All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. The realization that God is such a gracious God and that he loved me so much, a weak slave to sin who deserves death, that he came down to earth in human form and paid my ransom by being crucified for my sins, that realization transformed my life. Christ took our punishment and made us right in his eyes. Romans 3 verse 22 to 26 says, We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, and I am made right in God's sight. His grace set me free from my slavery to sin. The moment I put my trust in Jesus, trusting him as my savior, my heart was no longer empty. It was filled with joy. And now that I have that joy in my heart, I never want to lose it. My journey of following Jesus has not been perfect. I've still had my ups and downs, but God remains the joy of my heart. And every time I remind myself of his amazing grace and love, it makes me so ever grateful for such a God as him. I see the goodness of God every day of my life, and I've definitely seen the transformations he's made in others' lives and the transformation he's made in my own. He is a good, good father, and I want to follow him for all my days. So today, I'm taking my next step in faith, following Jesus' command and being baptized. Baptism is a symbol to me that I have given my life to Christ, buried my old self, and being crucified with him and raised to new life with him. Today, I'm being immersed in Christ, but it's also a reminder to me to immerse myself in him every day and follow in his steps. Galatians 2 verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank you to all the amazing people in my life who have never stopped encouraging me in my faith. I am beyond grateful to my Beppa, my mom, my Auntie Beth, and Auntie Tracy, my Pastor Mark, my youth pastor, Becky, and my incredible friends and family, and so many more who have shown me God's love and whom I have learned so much from in my walk with Jesus. I can't wait to be baptized and follow Jesus with all my heart. We often ask those getting baptized who some spiritually influential people in their life are to actually baptize them. And so uh, she's chosen her friend Chloe, and this is Beppa. <laughs> she has had an impact on many a uh, young life uh, and still does, and grateful for it. Oh, ma not as warm as we thought, eh, Lady? No. <laughs> so, Lydia, do you know that you were a sinner and you needed a savior? And do you believe that Jesus is a son of God, that he died on that cross to take all of your sins, and you're going to live for him for the rest of your life, no matter what may come? Yeah. Then based on uh, your confession of faith as Jesus is your Lord and Savior, I'm going to baptize you in his name. people here. Uh, good morning, I'm Rob Allendyke. I'm a Good morning, I'm Rob Allendyke, a husband to Mona, a father to four grown children, Justin, Courtney, Noah, Evan, a father-in-law to Bridget and to Esther, and an opa to beautiful Sophie Marie, and I'm a Jesus follower. <clears throat> I'm standing up here today because I want to proclaim public, in public to whoever will hear me that I love Jesus, that he laid down his life for me, 
<clears throat> and I might live eternally, that I might live eternally with him, that he died on the cross and suffered immensely, that I might live. I want to be baptized because I want repentance for my sins to be washed clean of them. Yes, I'm still going to be broken, still going to sin, but as a sin, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask God to renounce it and to continually ask for God's continually ask for God's grace and forgiveness. I want Satan to witness this. I want Satan to know that I'm standing up here as a man <clears throat> answering to a higher calling, that he has no jurisdiction here. He's not welcome in my home or near my family. I want to be a man of courage, a man to stand up against the things of this world. Satan's goal is that we don't pursue him, but that's exactly what this man's going to do. I want my wife, my kids, my siblings, my extended family, my church, my community to see that I am proclaiming him. I want to be a real man. Matthew 12, 35 says, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. <clears throat> the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. I want to be the man that brings good things that are stored in my heart. I know that I'm not always going to be the good man. Some days my actions won't be good or my temper or my words. But my repentance today will cleanse me. It allows me to ask for forgiveness again and again, to wipe that sin and guilt away and to continue on. That when I stumble, Jesus is going to pick me up again and again. It's a lot easier to practice this at home. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to be the man that speaks God's truth and not to be ashamed to do so, to stand strong in his word. I have so far to go, but this is the next step in my journey to pursue him. As much as I am a man, I want today to be the day I'm repenting my sins, dismissing Satan and emerging, emerging a man following Jesus. I joined a men's group last year, a group of men that fear God, that want to learn about him, and that want to grow in their faith. They want to pursue him. What a feeling in these times where a group of 10 or more can gather every Tuesday night in a circle and pray for each other, for each other's families and concerns. What a powerful thing. You men strengthen me, strengthen me. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. I'm thankful to my wife and her longing to know and live for Jesus, for her servant heart, for the faith of my kids. Something is going right when your faith is strengthened through their faith. I lost my dad when I was 12. He loved Jesus. Over those younger years, I had good, in my, good men in my life, but never a father that after I had lost mine. One of God's great blessings in my life is the privilege of being a father to four beautiful children. Words cannot express how much I love them. To be that dad for them through those years in my life when I didn't have one. To see them grow up. To see them grow up, to watch them get married, have a child. All those things my dad didn't see me do. Oh, what a blessed man am I. Oh, the feeling of walking with them when you just put your hand out a bit from your side and their hand slips into yours. The feeling of safety. Oh, how when I get to heaven and walk in between my earthly father and my heavenly father, hand in hand. What a day that will be. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> this is a, such a beautiful picture, you know. Um, we often have parents baptizing their child, and you'll see that today, but every once in a while you get to watch some kids baptize their parent, and uh, it is a powerful, a powerful thing. I'm a part of the group that Rob is a part of as well, and I've watched the transformation in his, uh, in his walk and in his life. He's a passionate man for the Lord. I'm excited to be a part of this. I wondered if that was coming off. <laughs> it rarely does. <laughs> Right on, right on. So Rob, you know that you were, were a sinner and needed a savior, and you believe that Jesus has washed away all your sin, past, present, future, that he is the son of God, and that one day 
you will live uh, with him in eternity. Until that day, you're going to live for him for the rest of your life, no matter what may come. Then based on your confession of Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord, boys are going to baptize you in his name. You can feel the love in this place. <laughs> uh, Rob sporting a shirt that he actually bought for each of us in the, in the men's group, just proclaiming in public, I'm a Jesus follower. And uh, man, I, I, it takes courage for men, especially it seems, I don't know why, but men to say, you know what, I, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to swallow my pride. I'm going to get baptized. I was the other day, I uh, had the flu and I was feeling rotten. I get this text from Rob. He's like, hey, I know it's my time. And uh, he sent me his story. And uh, man, I was so, so excited to see that. And if you're here today as a, as a guy and you're like, man, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. Hey, Rob set the stage for you. You know, now it's uh, it, maybe it's your turn. Uh, and I, I, I would say this, um, that there's others that, de- that, that uh, depend on what you decide as a husband and as a father. It affects your family. It affects your life, your obedience to Christ. And I would encourage you, if it's on your heart, let me know. Let that be you uh, next time in the tank. But I'm not preaching yet. All right, so we are going to finish with ladies last as well. Nevea, why don't you, wherever you are. Just tripped over Nevea's stuff, I think. Hello, my name is Nevaeh Norman. I'm being baptized today because I've surrendered my life to God. I want to publicly declare that Jesus is Lord of my life and I want to continue to walk in obedience to him. The more I dig into the word and get to know God, the more I feel the Holy Spirit working in me. I can see the fruit of the Spirit becoming more evident in my life. Even though I've been following Jesus for some time now, I thought of baptism as something I would do once I felt I was good enough. But as I read through Acts, I notice that it wasn't about being perfect or having it all together. It was all about him who is perfect and what he did for me. The people that were being baptized were those who repented and believed. Through baptism, it shows them choosing to die to themselves and being born again in Christ Jesus, a new creation. Today, I too take this step in following Jesus. Colossians 1, 10 to 14 says, So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience in giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Becky's one of the ones baptizing Nevaeh today, uh, had just an impact in her own daughter's life, but it's also in so many of our young people are so grateful that the Lord brought her to be our youth uh, leader for such a time as this. And we've seen many youth going through the waters of baptism as a result and knowing Jesus for themselves. So nay, sorry, I should be official, Nevaeh, uh, <laughs> do you know that you were a sinner and needed a savior? And do you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that his death on the cross paid for all your sins? You're going to serve him for the rest of your life, no matter what. Then based on your confession of Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, we're going to baptize you in his name. We had uh, Stacy, who was baptized here last night as well, and seeing these young people deciding at a young age to live for Jesus, oh man, how many regrets they won't have uh, as a result of these decisions. Encourage them in that. If you find a chance today to encourage Rob and these young ladies in, these, in this decision, uh, please do, please do, and thank you for being here to support them.